That is gorgeous. And then it's kind of... Uh, the silver on the Death Star is kind of reflective. Hard to pick up on camera. But let me tell you, this thing is beautiful in person. This kind of like reflective material that makes up uh, Star Wars here. That's on there. So, let's see. Is what a code? Is that a code for where? Oh, on the back here. There are digital codes included, and I have most of these movies um, in digital form. But there's no code on the box. No code on the box. All right. So, here we go. Oh, okay. So this just slides out. Wow. Okay, and it's like connected. It won't go any further. It's not a separate piece. Then you lift this. And then we have the book. So there you go. The Star Skywalker Saga. And then each in here is the films. Oh, and this is a letter. These are the digital... These are the codes for the digital movies. Wow, for each one. Maybe I'll do a giveaway since I actually own most of these already in digital. I'll have to look at that. Uh, stay tuned to my Twitter if you might want to win some Star Wars digital movies. But here is the letter from Mark Hamill. So, looks like that. Looks like this. So it says, what an extraordinary journey it's been. Back in 1976, when Carrie Harrison and I were testing for our roles in what was called The Adventures of Luke Starkiller, as taken from the Journal of the Wills, Saga 1, The Star Wars. There's no way we would have known that an incredibly rich and imaginative set of adventures that this obscure little space movie would launch, inspiring eight more chapters to tell the entire Skywalker story. For some of you, the journey begins with us over 40 years ago, inviting Star Wars into your lives from the seats of just a few dozen theaters in its first days of release. For others, you have joined us somewhere along the way, from the harrowing saga of young Anakin's descent to the dark side in the prequel trilogy or the introduction of an entirely new generation of heroes in the sequel trilogy. As Carrie once said, Star Wars is about family. And that is what we all have become, one giant community that shares the common experience of these stories and fundamental values they instill in us. Whether you're a relative newcomer to the Star Wars galaxy or a longtime UPF ultra-passionate fan, I've never heard of that before, um, I am deeply thankful for your continued enthusiasm and dedication to George's faraway galaxy, which will continue to grow with new storytellers building an even bigger galaxy filled with heroes, villains, action, romance, and, of course, the Force. May the Force be with you always, Mark Hamill. That's nice. That is nice. Got me a little emotional there. All right, so here we are, the pièce de résistance. So open it up, and we've got the infamous Star Wars logo and then a long time ago in a galaxy far far away all right and then okay cool so here's the first concept art piece we've got Naboo Starfighters as seen in episode one so they're going in chronological order here Doug Chiang here by the way uh, I think he became the head of of the art department at Lucasfilm for the sequel trilogies and was kind of the uh, understudy on the on the prequels. So there we go, 4K disc there for Phantom Menace. And then this is the regular Blu-ray um, 1080p version of the film in case you do not have the uh, a 4K player. I have my Xbox One X, which has a 4K drive. Um, so there's that. Um, next page, Attack of the Clones. This is beautiful. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous piece of art. The best bit of the Attack of the Clones, obviously the Genosha, the battle on Genosha, the beginning of the Clone Wars, art by Ryan Church. Let's take a look at the discs. What do we think is going to be on them? All right, so we've got Yoda absorbing the Force Lightning from Count Dooku on the 4K version. And on the 1080p version, it is the 
clone army at the very end of the film. Oh, and they've, I guess, marked exactly which is in which sleeve or where to put them. This is beautiful. I am so happy with this so far in terms of the presentation. Oh, wow, look at this. Okay, so this is Revenge of the Sith. And this is obviously the famous, or the infamous uh, battle between Obi-Wan and Anakin on uh, Mustafar, the final battle in the film. And then this is uh, art by Eric T Tiemens. Tiemens, very good. Jewel of the Jedi, it's entitled. Uh, a little bit more abstract than some of the other pieces we've seen so far. And then on the discs themselves, we have evil Anakin waiting for Obi-Wan on Mustafa. And then on the 1080p Blu-ray, it is them having a little debate. Uh, this is, I think, when they're talking about Palpatine, whether he can be trusted. And Anakin's like, oh, he's my best friend. And I'm like, dude, why did you befriend like someone who's like 120 years old and a politician? You're a fucking idiot. Yeah, this is all concept art. Now, here we go. We're in the original trilogy here. Now, that brings fucking chills. That is beautiful. Obviously, the Millennium Falcon in the port on Tatooine. I guess this is Hans. This is meant to be Han Solo here. And this is by the infamous Ralph McQuarrie. He is, I mean, the guy that basically made George's visions come true in, uh, I mean... I mean, both artistic form and then eventually physical form. He was the guy that was able to, the one person that could visualize George's uh, vision. And, and uh, I mean, it, Star Wars would be nothing without his work. And it's uh, amazing to see um, this uh, piece. It's, it's really, really beautiful. And I've never seen it myself. And I'm a huge Star Wars concept art fan. Like, that's the thing, is, like, it's not just the movies... It's the concept art. It is the uh, st the ba behind the scenes stories that you hear about how these films got made. Truly incredible stuff. Uh, the 4K disc for this one, Obi Wan and Vader facing off with Luke in the background, looking right before his master's demise, and then here. We have, ah, that's awesome. Leia giving R2-D2 the message that will eventually be, del be delivered to Obi-Wan. Um, these, are, these, are, these discs are really nice. I just wish we didn't have all of this like technical jargon around the rim. But otherwise, amazing stuff. All right, the next one. Some would argue the best film in the entire franchise. We have Empire Strikes Back. More Ralph McQuarrie art. Obviously, Besp in the Cloud City, where the bulk of the finale of the film takes place. And then we have these, uh, I think they're called, like, I forget what they're called, but, like, these dual pod starfighters. Uh, not starfighters, sorry, just, like, I guess they're meant to be like flying cars, but there's a pod, one pod per person, and I guess they they fly simultaneously. They're they're one of my favorite real quirky designs uh, from from Empire Strikes Back or from Star Wars in totality because they don't make any goddamn sense, uh, and that's the beauty of it. Uh, again, another Ralph McQuarrie piece here, but look at the detail here, like on these like little buildings down here, like it's its own little city. Best been such a fantastic location in the Star Wars universe. And then the discs themselves. We have, okay, so the 4K disc is the 8080s from the Battle of Hoth in the very beginning of the film. And then this one is probably going to be Luke and Vader facing off, if I'm just going to guess. Nope. Oh, wow. It's the final frame of the film. It's them looking on into the galaxy. Uh, R2, C3PO. Luke and Leia, um, no Han Solo or Chewbacca. Uh, I don't know where Chewie is. Maybe he's out of frame. Maybe he's like to the left or to the right here. But Han, obviously, at this point, had been captured by uh, Vader and um, 
been taken by Boba Fett to Jabba the Hutt. Speaking of which, that brings us to the final original trilogy film, Return of the Jedi. Wow, that is fucking cool. That Vader art, we've got the Emperor's... Um, I forget what they're called, the Emperor's like foot soldiers or whatever, his guards, the Royal Guards. Um... And over here, more raw guards to the left. Again, Ralph McQuarrie. It only makes sense that it's Ralph McQuarrie's art on this, uh, on the original trilogy pieces. And this is entitled Darth Vader's Arrival. Stormtroopers in the back. This is great. Uh, the shuttle there, the kind of Imperial shuttles. Uh, this is fantastic. This might be my favorite one so far. And they've all been great. All right, on the disc itself. <laughs> uh, so we have Han Solo here. Um, this is when they've been captured by the Ewoks, and he's trying to convince the 3PO, who they believe to be a god uh, to them. Uh, he's trying to convince the 3PO to convince them not to eat them. Uh, fun little bit. Lots of lots of light-hearted, humorous bits in Return of the Jedi, which I know a lot of people fault it for. But um, you know, it is what it is. Can't go back and undo these movies, and who would want to, really, at the end of the day? And then this last piece is, uh, okay, interesting choice. Uh, C-3PO and R2-D2 on the way to Jabba's palace to ch deliver a message from Luke Skywalker to give Han Solo back to him. Um, interesting choice. Probably would not have gone with this one myself. Um in fact, both of these are very interesting choices for the Return of the Jedi. The fight, like, no Emperor shots, no Darth uh, Death Star pieces. Um, interesting choices there. But at the end of the day, it's just going into your Blu-ray or 4K Blu-ray player. So not necessarily the most important part. At least we've got this beautiful concept art here. All right, the next piece. We are at the sequel trilogy. And here we have another Millennium Falcon shot, this time on the planet Jakku, right before, I guess. So this is interesting here. So this is really early concept art for the movie. Um, Andre Wallen uh, did the art the Falcon revealed. So I guess this, this set piece must have been in the film from the very kind of beginning where they discover the Millennium Falcon because this is meant to be um, Ray, and I th this is meant to be Poe. Uh, both of these characters were wildly, wildly different for a very long time. Um, in fact, I think Ray's name was Kira um, in, I mean, for forever in, in the concept uh, phase of the film. Um, and the heroes that she partnered with, Finn was, I mean, not a black guy here, obviously. Uh, Vision is a white dude. Um, but the, the characters that they had in the film were, were very different in the con concept phase for a very long time. Um, and so interesting that they went with this piece, considering that it has, it's, I mean, the you know, Ray doesn't even look like Ray here, but it is, it is what it is. Um, the kind of hiding of the, the reveal of the Millennium Falcon here is, is really cool. I love uh, not only the sheets coming off the Falcon, but they look like they're being pulled off the page there that they're being removed from the page to reveal the Falcon to the person that's simply viewing this art. So that's that's really cool. I do not like how this is already wearing here, but that's fine. Next piece. Oh, look at that. That is dope. That is seemingly taken right off the screen. Oh, sorry. We got to look at the discs for Force Awakens. All right. Uh, so the first disc... BB-8, this looks like when they're on, I forget the name of the planet, but the planet uh, that has, uh, what's her name? Lupita Nyong'o plays a little alien creature. Um, God damn. Oh, fuck. It's escaping me. Um, but when they go to uh, see about uh, kind of contacting the Resistance. Um, fuck, what is her name? It'll come to me later, I'm sure. But that's BB-8, obviously, who became the darling of the sequel trilogy. And then the Blu-ray, 1080p. Oh, same. So this is, I guess, like minutes later in the film when the X X-Wings show up to fight the First Order that has arrived. 
on the planet. Okay. Next piece is The Last Jedi. And this is moments before Luke Skywalker's uh, unfortunate demise. When he uses powers, this is by Seth Angstrom here. It's called Luke Skywalker's Sunset. Uh, so this is moments before uh, Luke Skywalker perishes after after force projecting his image to crate to face off against kylo ren but more importantly to buy time for the resistance to escape um such a beautiful kind of poignant moment i felt and uh i am a huge last jedi fan i think it's incredible in fact i don't dislike any of the prequel films i think they're actually all very uniquely good uh force awakens i think was a perfect blend between introducing these new characters and um uh kind of reimagining the a new hope and retelling that story in a way that was uh just as kind of relevant so i really love that i love the last jedi for how different it is and i think that it has the most important things to say uh about um kind of the balance between good and evil um in any Star Wars film. I think it's just, it's writing and messaging are fantastic. And I think it's visually the best looking of all of them. I think that its cinematography is unparalleled uh, when it comes to uh, that. Um, so what do we have disc-wise here? All right, so this is Rey, right before her training. Uh, right before, well, she, this is, I guess Luke wasn't really training her. She was just like, I'm gonna fuck around with a lightsaber. Uh, so that's what's on the 4K version of the disc. And then we have, let's see here. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, this is great. This is uh, Kylo Ren looking on to the, the First Order, uh, I guess like AT-ATs and all of the, um, I think, Chicken Walkers and ATSTs being built. Uh, moments before he has a kind of force communication, force uh, Zoom <laughs> chat with uh, Ray. Cool. And then the final movie, the one that's releasing today, the most controversial Star Wars movie I think ever made, is The Rise of Skywalker. Um, look at that concept art. So this is Kylo Ren facing off against Ray. This is called The Final Confrontation, art by Andre Wallen and Stephen Tappin. Um, and then obviously we have uh, the TIE fighter in the background. Um, uh, this is beautiful. Uh, I love the colors. I always thought this imagery of them fighting on the Death Star was fucking awesome. And uh, like I said, I don't hate any of the Star Wars movies. And there's a lot of things that I think Rise of Skywalker does very well. I think it uh, introduces really some extended lore that is not in any of the other films uh, i think the stuff between kylo ren and ray were really uh was really great um uh, and i think that we saw like a lot of planets which a lot of star wars movies especially coming off the last jedi which only really takes place in three places it takes place in space on between the ships it takes place on luke's uh oh, four places sorry uh luke's planet uh acto the island that he's on it takes place on canto bite for a bit the casino planet and then obviously the end bit with crate um so it was really great i think for the rise of skywalker to uh kind of go back to a they're hopping from planet to planet they're on a journey uh the roots of it uh and i'm gonna watch this later tonight and i haven't seen it uh since it was in theaters so excited for that and then obviously the discs the 4K version, this is during the final battle between Rey and Kylo Ren on the Death Star, or the wreckage of the Death Star. Um, good stuff there. And then what's the uh, what's this one? This is going to be Rey on... Uh, what the fuck? Alright, so this is Rey, I guess, on that desert planet begins with a p i can't remember i don't know what, what part of the film this is looks like it's composited too with like the smoke interesting choice um but i'm never gonna pull this disc out so i guess it doesn't matter at all um cool uh all right and then we've got a few more pieces here because there's a bunch of bonus discs uh so this isn't we've moved on from concept art to um the photos uh, some set photos 
So this is uh, from Attack of the Clones. Anthony Daniels in costume as C-3PO. Um, now, interestingly enough, I'm pretty sure uh, Kenny Baker, who was the little person that had piloted R2-D2 in the original trilogy, I think he had passed away before they had filmed any of the uh, prequels or and obviously sequels. Um, and I think R2-D2 is kind of all like remote, just drone, remote controlled for both of those trilogies. Kenny Baker, who is, oh, or maybe he did Phantom Menace and then passed away. I can't remember. But Kenny Baker, who was the original R2-D2, fun little connection between me and him. Uh, my father used to teach English. It was one of his first jobs out of college. And Kenny Baker's son was actually one of his students uh, in, I guess, high school, it would have been, or the secondary school we call it in England. But it's way different uh, than the setup you have here in america uh the other piece that obviously marks that we're now in the bonus part bonus features part of the book uh the phantom menace shooting the grand arena miniature for the pottery sequence so all of this was done with miniatures and then obviously they overlaid a shit ton of cgi on top of that i'm surprised that these miniatures exist at all and what bonus discs do we have here we have Okay, so the Phantom Menace bonus disc, and then this will be Attack of the Clones. Makes sense to me. What is on them? Uh, I think Jermaine, over at Iron 9, his piece lists that out. I think pretty much all of the bonus features, save for a few kind of odds here and there, are on these discs. Um, so then we have, whoops, my bad, Revenge of the Sith. This is... Uh, Uh, I guess this is Obi-Wan and Anakin about to face off against um, General Grievous. Yeah, and these are the robots. <laughs> but they're just men in green green skin suits there. And then we have this concept art for A New Hope. Um, I guess this is right before shooting the first glimpse of Mos Eisley. Yep. So this is um, them about to go find Han and Chewie. So obviously these discs will be, that is Revenge of the Sith. Oh, okay, cool. That's the Starfighter, uh, Anakin Starfighter. Uh, these discs, by the way, all in 1080p. I'm pretty sure they are not 4K discs. And this is A New Hope. George Lucas here chatting with, um, oh my God, who played Obi-Wan? Ah, oh, that's that's annoying me too. Um, but the actor that played the OG Obi Wan Kenobi, uh, this and I, and George holding Luke's lightsaber here, so him talking about uh, Luke's uh, obviously what it means to have a lightsaber. That whole like it is a it is a more civilized weapon for a more civilized time or whatever, a more elegant weapon. I can't remember. All right, next page. Here we go. We have The Empire Strikes Back, uh, and Phil Tippett, one of the key animators on Empire Strikes Back, animating, doing all the stop motion for the AT-ATs. That's, uh, all these things were done in stop motion, which is uh, kind of wild. Um, but yeah, so that's cool. That's really dope. And then we have Return of the Jedi. Uh, George kind of going over the second Death Star with... Um, I guess this team. I love, I love these guys that are like just like standing on top here. Dope. Discs. We have Empire Strikes Back bonus discs. So that's them shooting the AT-AT stop motion stuff. And then Return of the Jedi. And that is uh, someone painting a background drop, I guess. Because they would do a lot of uh, stuff like that where they would paint um the backgrounds and then just kind of have them shoot them with the characters in the foreground and because of forced perspective and things like that it would look like they were just these big structures or mountains in the background when really it was a much closer painting uh really cool stuff they did something similar for the force awakens all of the trees and stuff in the background in the final fight uh in the forest um was uh painted they built that forest um which is really cool uh, speaking of The Force Awakens, here is Daisy Ridley chatting with J.J. Uh, Abrams. 
uh, and this is her AT-AT home that had collapsed during the Battle of Jakku, which was the technically final battle in the uh, war, the Star Wars that occurred in the original trilogy. Uh, you don't see the Battle of Jakku happen. It happens after the Battle of Endor, um, but it is kind of seen as the defeat of the Empire because I think they destroy one of their Super Star Destroyers and it's kind of like the final Super Star Destroyer. Or is it? We'll have to find out. Next piece, The Last Jedi, Ryan Johnson. Ryan Johnson with uh, Chewbacca and Rey. This is obviously them uh, about to go... Uh, fight all the TIE fighters that are on crate. Uh, we have uh, this is the Force Awakens disc so J.J. Uh, Abrams talking with um, Harrison Ford about stuff and then the final this is the last Jedi disc this is uh, Rian Johnson talking to uh uh, the R2-D2, Anthony Daniels in the R2-D2 suit, unless he's talking to a, just, what if, it would be really funny if he was just, like, chatting with the suit, but, like, Anthony, he thought Anthony Daniels was in it, but he wasn't. <laughs> it's like, Anthony, how are you doing? Yeah, for the next scene, I think you can just, like, be a bit more emotive, and Anthony Daniels is, like, going and getting coffee or whatever. That'd be funny. All right, and then I guess this will be, like, final page here. Okay, here we go. Look, J.J. Abrams grew out his uh, stress beard, I'm sure, trying to make this fucking movie. Uh, so we've got J.J. Abrams talking with Adam Driver as they prepare to film The Rise of Skywalker. This is obviously the broken down Death Star that is uh, one of the final set pieces for the film. So that's cool. And then uh, more Rise of Skywalker stuff. So Oscar Isaac and John Boyega getting comfortable during a lunch break. Comfortable, you say? Looking very comfortable. Looking like two pals. Or maybe even two lovers. Uh, and then this will be the Rise of Skywalker bonus disc. Um, so this is J.J. Abrams chatting with Chewbacca. The actor is not the original actor for Chewbacca, who sadly, um, Peter Mayhew, who passed away a few years ago. Um, this is something sum sumo... Um, I forget his name, but he was basically the stunt actor for Chewbacca. He in the Force Awakens, he did um, all of the kind of scenes with Chewbacca needing to be a bit more active. But Peter Mayhew was in the Chewbacca suit for most of the Force Awakens. But anytime he needed to run, because Peter May Mayhew had some health issues, um, anytime that they needed any kind of like physical activity, they had him do the role and then when peter mayhew passed away um and they he couldn't uh i think i think he had passed away after they filmed last jedi but at the same time i think he was like i can't i can't play this this role anymore um so uh they had the that guy come in and do all of the physical well he played he's just chewbacca now he is chewbacca he was chewbacca and solo last jedi and force awakens uh sorry rise of skywalker uh, and here is the closing pages is simply just some stars and that everybody is the complete the skywalk saga so we have nine well we have nine discs for the original movies and then we have nine discs for the we have nine discs for their 4k versions and then nine discs for their 1080p versions and then we have discs for each of the films in 1080p so yeah 27 discs total uh so it's that we have the uh, letter from Mark Hamill. And then that just uh, this just opens up here and goes in like, we'll make sure that that's how it goes in like so. So everyone, that is the Star Wars complete saga, um, the Skywalker saga. Uh, collector's edition, and I am very happy with it. That's a, that's I'm not happy with that. That's not great, um, but it's beautiful. The concept art is some of the best. Uh, obviously, they probably spent a lot of time figuring out which concept art pieces would go in, and it's no mistake. Some of these, are, uh, these are some of the best concept art for any of the films that I've seen before, and uh, I ream through the concept art. I have the art books for pretty much all of the films. Uh, 
pretty much anything to do with Star Wars artwork I own. Um, yeah, so uh, tonight we're going to be watching The Rise of Skywalker here in our apartment as we continue to quarantine. Um, if I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do with the codes, I've got to figure out which ones I own uh, already. I think I own all of the prequels digitally. I own all of the sequels uh, digitally, um, except for Rise of Skywalker. So I'm definitely going to be keeping that code. But maybe the o OG trilogy and the uh, prequel trilogy I'll be giving away uh, on Twitter, maybe 